Hare Krishna. Sound quality on this isn't going to be all that great. We have some new equipment and it's not adjusted properly yet. But I couldn't wait. I have to try to share what's been going on. <clears throat> I had to take a long drive today to pick up a part that's been discontinued. And so I had a lot of time to think. <laughs> but it was good thinking. He was thinking about devotees, about Krishna, and about <clears throat> Gora Haridas for me. And after a couple hours of driving, I started to get some conclusions. And Gaurav Haridas Prabhu's preaching is on a very unusual level, something we're not used to. Um, his spontaneous devotional service. But he's not the only one that has reached that level of sharing devotional ecstasies in Krishna consciousness. We have a history. We have our saints. Most notably, Jayananda. In the 70s, when Prabhupada was physically present with us, and Prabhupada acknowledged that he had reached a very wonderful level of devotional ecstasy in service to Krishna. Now, what was Jayananda known for? His scholarship? His renunciation, his memorizing verses. No. He was known and loved because he emanated pure devotion to Krishna. And anyone that came into contact with him will testify that just being in his presence was an extraordinary experience because love was awakened in his heart. Love for God was awakened in his heart. He was able to engage people that, very unusual people, <laughs> all sorts of people. Everyone was attracted to Jayananda because of the condition of his heart, not how much he knew verses and scriptures. And that wasn't Jayananda. It was, he emanated love of God. And he did make some astounding personal sacrifices. He was responsible for printing and publishing, the costs of the printing and publishing of the Nectar of Devotion. And it's not like Jayananda was a very wealthy person. I think he may have been a taxi driver or something like that. I'm not sure about that. Um, and then after a while, he was diagnosed with leukemia, unfortunately. And he, the money, little bit of money that he had, a few thousand dollars, instead of using it for like pain medication and special medicines that might prolong his life a little bit, he, he gave it for getting Rathiatra going. Use the money for the Rathiatra. So in that sense, too, he was unusual. He was out of pure love and devotion, he was able to do that. So he's known for that also, but mostly he's known for the, the love that he emanated. And that's what people were attracted to, his love of God. So there's a wonderful disciple of Srila Prabhupada, and Prabhupada acknowledged his wonderful disciple. He loved Jayananda and requested that Jayananda's appearance day and disappearance day be honored with special feasting and chanting and remembrance of a great, wonderful, loving, pure devotee. There are other great disciples also that reached a level of spontaneous devotional service. Another one is Aimur Prabhu. Einer's well known for his kirtans, 24 hour chanting in Vrindavan for years. 
in his few times of soldiers following his standard. And he gave many um, personal darshans and held satsangas in his quarters in Bengali, where he discussed how important it is for the disciples to go beyond simply practicing under rules and regulations, but to actually develop love of God. Prema bhakti, bhava bhakti, that that is the goal. And by his association, many people, their lives were transformed. Many people's lives were transformed by his kirtans, by his preaching, and by his association. He was very learned also. He could support what he was saying through scriptural reference. He was able to do that. And that's a sign of a First class devotee, Nupama Adhikari. So there's another wonderful disciple who reached that level of pure devotion. And then another disciple that comes to mind is Gorabhavindra Maharaj. Now his classes were very dynamic, very animated. If you listen to them, you'll hear a lot of shouting and ranting and laughing hysterically. And different types of expressions of his devotional ecstasies for God in worship of the Lord. And here again, anyone who came to contact, close contact with Gorbhavinda and heard submissively from him had that experience of being transformed just by taking their association and hearing from them nicely. So there's three that come to mind. There's undoubtedly more and others in the process of, of getting there. But there's three that are very obvious, three wonderful disciples who reach that platform of pure devotion, of worshiping the Lord in ecstatic way. They have something else in common also. They all left early. Jayananda left early. He was not an old man. He was a young man when he disappeared. Aindra left early through a terrible accident in his room in Bengali. He was not an old man. And Gorbhavinda left early. Um, there's some talk that he left just because he wanted to leave. He couldn't live in separation any longer. So they have that in common, they left early. They're gone. We can't take advantage of their personal association now. We can remember them and meditate on their wonderful personalities and their activities and marvel at their pure devotion and how they were able to reach that platform of spontaneous love of God. We don't have their personal, physical presence. They're gone. But we do have now the personal presence of a very great Vaishnava who has reached that platform of spontaneous devotional service. And anyone who takes his association and hears from him submissively will experience the transformation because he's emanating pure devotion to Lord Chaitanya. And he is able to back up everything that he says from the scriptures. But he's not a scholar. He's an inspired devotee of the Lord preaching on the platform of pure devotion. Now, many followers of Srila Prabhupada don't appreciate this platform. They didn't appreciate Aindra Prabhu, and they didn't appreciate Gorgovinda Prabhu. But somehow Jayananda squeaked by because Prabhupada was personally present, pointing him out personally. So we don't hear much criticism of 
Jaya Manga Kodi. But once it came later, after Prabhupada's disappearance, they were heavily criticized. Ainur was heavily criticized by the official leadership of this country. Gorgovinda was criticized, heavily criticized. And now we see that same pattern with Gorharyas today. So let's not miss it this time. Those other devotees are gone, but we have the good fortune of Gaur Haridas Prabhu, who is actively giving his association, preaching, glorifying the Lord in ecstatic devotion. And he's using the internet to broadcast these messages, which means he can reach the entire world, anyone who tunes in on Facebook. <laughs> And they're in Siberia and they have a smartphone or they're in Africa and they've got a smartphone or a laptop or something, they can tune in and hear and see pure devotees preaching on the platform of ecstatic love of God. So let's not miss it this time. The other ones are gone. But we do have Gurhari Das Prabhu. So we'll open our minds, open our hearts, and hear submissively pure preaching on the platform of pure devotional service, spontaneous devotional service, under the direction and order of Srila Prabhupada and Pacific Succession. This is what they want. This is the whole mission. So open the mind, open the heart, and hear submissively. Take advantage of this very unusual situation, very rare opportunity. I'm going to put the link to his Facebook page uh, below or up here on this video somewhere. And there are many videos there that he broadcasts live two times a day at least. You should catch those live broadcasts, ask questions, or study the recorded videos and be amazed and be enlivened, be relieved and be set free from so many misconceptions. Hare Krishna.